Well, you might notice that my left eye looks a bit dodgy. Well, it always looks a bit dodgy. But I went and had a cataract operation, which was a fantastic success. And I only had it the day before yesterday. So as you can see, it don't take long to get better. But it's quite a good story, really, because I go to the posh opticians in Tame, which I've been going to for 20 years. And I went to them, and um, they made me a pair of glasses that cost £600, and uh, they were useless. So I'm thinking, well, this is no good. I don't know what to do about this. But anyway, so I'm walking through Tame, and they've just opened a new Specsavers place. So I walked in and said to the girl, you know, I'm, I'd like to have an eye check for some glasses. So she put me in and I went along and I had all the checkup and everything. And I finished up with a final bloke who's Tony and uh, a really good bloke. And um, anyway, so he looks in my eyes and everything and he said, well, look, there's no point in us making you a set of glasses because you've got cataracts. And unless you get the cataracts done, there ain't right, no point. So I thought, thank God that I walked into Specsavers rather than go to the posh bloody opticians again because they didn't help me at all. All I did there was do 600 quid and I lost the glasses because they were so useless I put them somewhere I can't find them. But anyway, so then he says to me, because of the pandemic, I can recommend you directly to the hospital to do the cataract. So I said, blimey, that's good, so you better do that then. So anyway, he did that. Next thing you know, I get a, a thing from, within a week, I got a letter from a firm in um, Watford, a private hospital, went over, had a good look at my eyes and did all the pre-operation thing. And then I finish up going and having the operation the day before yesterday, which is obviously a great success. And then apparently I go to Specsavers again. Tony looks at my eyes and says, yeah, that's lovely. And then probably 11 days to two weeks later, I'll go and have the other one done. So I'm going to have the eyes of a blooming, I would have said something that ended with a rat, but we won't say that. Anyway, so there we are. So what happened was, last weekend, I went to um, Brooklands to a, a Lotus 7 club dinner. And two people asked me about the two-stroke engine. When are you going to do the two-stroke engine? So I thought, well, we better make a start. So we're going to make a start today, and I'll go through it all with you, and then we're going to start thinking about, we're going to need to make an exhaust manifold, so we're going to have to get some bends. We've got the stand for the two-cylinder mini engine, and what we're thinking of doing is putting that underneath, so it gets the two prototype BMC engines together. So that would be a really good thing. So now what I'll do is I'll just talk about this engine a little bit because what happened was when we did the two-cylinder mini-engine, some bloke sent me an email and said, oh, I know a bloke who's got the two-cylinder two-stroke engine that they experimented with, which I thought was amazing. But anyway, as it happens, I went and bought it off the man, a really good bloke whose name I can't remember, thinking about names and being able to remember. Jerry Marshall can remember everybody's bloody name. I've been with Jerry and some sort of Marshall or something that he met years before at some circuit had come up and he'd go, oh, hello, Fred, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. So my advice to anybody who's uneducated like me and you can't do all the normal educated things, try and learn how to remember people's names because in my experience, that's very important. But I never managed to crack it. But anyway, so this really good bloke who apparently, in his younger days, built a load of replica SS100s. So, um, and I think he built 35 of them. So they're probably all original cars now. But anyway, that's another story. So here we are. So I go and buy the engine off him, and here it is. And now what we've done, we've stripped it down, and we've had a number of bits be blasted. But when it was picked, when we picked it up, we've got a really good bloke who lives near us who moves cars about. And of course, he came in one day and he saw it all. Well, as it happened, he's got a very special pooch. And he looked straight at it and said, oh, that's a pooch. So when you actually look at it, those cylinder heads, you can see where the sides were machined off, the numbers on that one and the numbers on that one. So I think that is pure po pooch two-stroke. Well, apparently, the man who designed and did this was the man who did the pooch. So it's obvious, isn't it, really? And I really would, 
should know his name, but of course the old story, I can't remember bloody names. But anyway, so there we are. So I reckon that's pooch, but I think this here is purely designed to be a prototype to think about a mini. Because when you look at it, this hasn't been modified, that has been made. And then that bit there, that bit there is all designed and made to line up with the BMC rear plate. So that proves to me that it was definitely done at BMC. And that BMC plate fits perfectly on a BMC gearbox. So I don't think there's any doubt that that was specially produced as a prototype with the thoughts of the Mini when they were blundering around really not knowing what to do with the Mini. I mean, they made the two-cylinder engine, they made the two-cylinder two-stroke engine, and then they finished up with a BMC engine which had already been producing for donkey's years. But, you know, that's another story and probably had a lot to do with accountants, but there we are. Um, so it's a very interesting engine because it's got four pistons and obviously one side is the exhaust and the other side is the inlet and unfortunately we've got a broken piston ring but when we took the piston ring off you can see that this engine is definitely run because there's quite a lot of carbon behind the piston rings so we're going to have to make a piston ring so that'll make quite a good um, that would make quite a good thing, really, because uh, not many people make their own piston rings, and we already made them for another car I got called the Donny ZL. And to be honest, all we did was we went onto um, YouTube and put in how to make piston rings, and it, well, we copied it precisely. And the old Donny ZL is running beautifully, so we obviously can make piston rings. Well, anyway, John can make piston rings. Um, so the idea now, well, I'll get onto the people who make cylinder liners and I'll try and buy a cylinder liner that is as close to that as possible because cylinder liners are made of the best cast iron so all we'll have to do is machine it to size, pile it off and then do the clever bit which we'll do on YouTube so you can all see it although you can go on YouTube and, and beat me and find out the way I learned how to do it but anyway at least we'll look good. Also it's got a BMC flywheel now there's no doubt that that is just a modified Austin A35 flywheel. It's, it's considerably lightened, so it'd be quite a nice flywheel to use on the Austin Eddie Sprite or something, but we're not going to do that, obviously. So that, to me, proves that this engine is definitely a prototype engine that was embarked on by BMC when they were trying to make their mind up what to do. Now, the other thing I was just going to mention, and it's now gone completely out of the head. No, it's gone. But anyway, so there we are. So now we're going to start attempting to put it together. And um, the other thing we're going to do, obviously, you have to put these four pistons in at once into that, into that cylinder block. Now, I can't see how you do that. But... When I worked on Bugatti's, the Type 57, you can read in the Bugatti books that it's impossible to put a cylinder block on a Type 57 without having the engine out of the car because obviously you get all the pistons in it except for the last two and they're hidden down in the sort of bottom of the engine and you can't get a clamp to them, you can't get your fingers to them. So anyway, we had to do it and I sat and thought about it and I thought, well, why don't we just glue the piston rings down with some wax and as it happened we had some wax that they used for lost wax casting which is sort of a brown wax and we had a bit of it kicking around so what we did was we melted it down run it in behind the piston rings squeezed it together put the airline on it which held them close and the last two pistons which we couldn't get in by hand we dropped the cylinder block on and the car started up on eight cylinders and I don't know where the wax went, but we never ever saw it again, and it, and, it, and it did the job. So this has got to have the piston rings spigoted, because they can't turn around because they're dropping inside the port. So not only have we got to get four pistons in at once, more or less, we've also got to get the piston rings in the dead right place. So I think that we should do the wax treatment on these, 
to get them in, which we'll obviously make a film of. And a lot of, this could do a lot of people a favour when they're really struggling with something. You can't get the piston rings in. And one thing about piston rings in, when they've gone in, you want to be absolutely sure you ain't broken them. And that is not easy. So, so that's how we'll do it. And not only that, we'll obviously make the piston ring on YouTube and um, slowly put it together. We're going to have to make an exhaust manifold. We've got the inlet manifold, but we haven't got a carburetor. So we thought we'd put like a mini carburetor on it because that is a possibility of what they might have done. By the way, all these parts have got part numbers on them. So, you know, it, they weren't just um, experimenting. There obviously was a, a, sort of a piece of paper with all the part numbers on. So that got on there. But then we've got to do the exhaust. So probably what we'll do, we'll lay the cylinder block in the bottom of the two-cylinder mini cradle and work out whether we've got it to come here or go there or go here. And then we'll order the, the bits of tube from Demon Tweaks, which is where we order all our bits of bent tube from. The manifold on the Hall of Scott was made with uh, Demon Tweaks tube. So that's it. And I've no doubt that we're going to have to use some Tiger Seal. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe and um, we'll be getting on with this as soon as possible.